Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today is a filler video because actually there was a video planned about Spotify. They were doing something I don't really like and I need to share with you, but I'm giving them some more time to actually get back to me. I'm in contact with them talking about this topic. So I want to have their full view and, and, and like just get feedback from them before I make this entire video. So today's video is about something simple that you probably all should know by now, but if not, then definitely stay tuned. It's about clipping, limiting, and compression. What these three things are and how I actually use them. And since this is a filler video, we're doing a giveaway. There are two prizes involved you can win. We got by our friends at Cable Guys, Shaperbox 3 and Halftime, both plugins you can use to sidechain and do all kind of weird effects that are really nice. And all you have to do is follow the link in the description to my new profile. I have a new artist project that is, I'm developing it. First release is uh, beginning of next year. I'll share everything about it. If you want to know what kind of sound, what it looks like and everything, link down below in the description. Just go follow and comment underneath the, the most recent post. Now let's let's get started with clipping, limiting, and compression. First of all, there is there is a hard ceiling you need to know about, and you probably already know zero decibels. That's where music basically stops. If you make things louder than that, they're gone. Everything below it is our realm where we can create sounds, make music, and people can actually listen to it. Now let's start with compression. It's, it's probably the most old school, most used one. Compression basically makes loud parts in a song, in a sample, in a loop. It makes those, it takes those loud parts, parts above a certain threshold and pushes them down. There is attack and release to control how fast, how slow, and when it actually does it. But in general, it just takes loud parts, makes them quieter. And then with the makeup gain, you can increase the overall sound again. So at the end, you get the same signal where just the quiet parts are increased in volume and the loud ones are staying where they are to just make it appear louder. I personally, for example, on vocals, always use compression because the singer might be closer to a mic, further away of the mic, and just to compensate for that, instead of automating it, just drawing the volume automation, it's easier to use a compressor. Limiting is pretty simple because it's compression on steroids. It's like compression with all of the settings set to infinity. It basically just takes everything above a certain threshold and pushes it hard down. It's like a car crashing into a wall. Everything that's that's being like crushed into the wall is just like squeezed together. That's That's what limiting does. It's very, very useful to make things appear a lot louder. I use it, probably everyone making music uses a limiter as the last part in a chain of your master chain. It's the last plugin on your song. It cuts everything, or no, it doesn't cut it. It pushes everything down so nothing exceeds zero. Nothing is being cut away. Everything is pushed below it. This greatly reduces the dynamic range. So again, the example with someone um, singing, being close and further apart of a mic, if you limit it, it all gets really, really close. And speaking of limiting, exceeding zero, we're already where clipping starts. So if you just chop the sound off, if you just chop it instead of pressing it down below a certain value, if you just get rid of it, that's clipping. Basically, it was just back in the days, um, for example, driving your, your mixer, your fader, the sound too hard into it and uh, the voltage was too much, so it just got cut out. The analog clipping by most people is, is considered sounding pretty nice. Some do it on purpose, some absolutely hate it and try to not clip at all. Digital clipping sounds a lot more artificial. I personally use um, clipping more on, on drum elements. For example, on a snare, it can sound really nice, um, getting some distortion that is um, generated by, by the chopping off of the part. If you overdo it, it will sound weird and, and very like artificial. 
but that's a stylistic choice that is really up to you. Actually, for all three of these elements. If you overdo them, they will start um, degrading the source material. Sometimes you want that. You can color a sound with a certain compressor, usually the ones that emulate vintage gear. You can um, squeeze it like crazy with a limiter. For some styles of music, it's almost necessary. Dubstep wouldn't sound that in your face and punchy and super hyper compressed without limiting basically almost every single element. Uh, let's maybe round it up with an example. We'll take a kick, compress it. You can see in the compressor how it basically shapes, um, shapes the, the kick into something new. If we use a, a clipper, it will just chop it off. The waveform will look very chopped and the limiter will press it down. It looks very similar, but you don't get the, the clipping sound. So again, totally up to you which to use when. I personally, on vocals, always a compressor. Maybe, maybe, maybe sometimes a limiter, but usually not. On drum elements, I would rather use a limiter or a clipper, depending if I want to have that clipped sound. And actually on the master, I personally use uh, first compression, but just a tiny bit, just like gain reduction of 1 dB, just pressing the peaks down a tiny bit. Then I use a clipper, also a very, very, very tiny bit. And at the end, a limiter to just make sure nothing goes above zero and introduces digital clipping. That's basically it.